I'm driving a boat truck thing. In this video, for 60,000 subscribers, it's something a bit special. It's a duck. Oh, so this is definitely something a bit special. Um, we're here with Rotorua Duck Tours. It is a genuine World War II duck. Um, duck stands for D-U-K-W. So it's not quite duck, the, the traditional spelling, but they were developed um, in America by GMC uh, to be amphibious, uh, took part in uh, the Normandy landings and also in the Korea War as well. So they have a, a fair bit of history. We don't know the exact history of this one, but um, yeah, they're certainly very, very different. Um, it's be the um, first vehicle I've ever driven that has a propeller. <laughs> uh, so here is the propeller and uh, the engineering is really quite interesting. Um, un under the um, hull, if you like, uh, the running gear is the same as the CCKW truck uh, built by JMC, GMC in many, many different forms. Sort of open tops and um, with cabs. And I think we may even have had a ride around one in the Packard and Pioneer Museum. So it's a six wheel drive truck as the basis, 4.4 litre engine, uh, which doesn't produce vast power, but does produce a fairly decent um, heap of torque. Uh, so all wheels are potentially driven, although you don't have to drive with them engaged. And there are prop shafts aplenty, apparently, because um, we've got a prop shaft down to the front axle, and look at the size of that. It's huge. And um, there's a separate prop shaft for each rear axle. It, it isn't a drive-through. Um, if we can try and get underneath, there's a separate prop shaft that comes back for the rear diff. Uh, you can just see the universal joint mounted on top of the front one. Uh, but yeah, look at the size of the um, leaf springs, they're enormous. And uh, one interesting fact is um, this was one of the first vehicles to have self-inflating tyres, so you could change the tyre pressures as you were driving along. Um, now let's go and have a nose aboard. Rotorua duck tours do tours um, around Rotorua, funnily enough. Uh, so we can take in the inside. It's not how it would have been kitted out back in the day. They were designed to carry 12 troops, I think, but um, they've managed to cram a few more seats in today. There is a, a cool box, um, all good stuff. There is a much more modern steering wheel because, because these are operated in New Zealand and these are the only ducks that are operating in New Zealand. They do operate in different countries around the world, Dublin, Liverpool, and uh, various places in America. They had to be right-hand drive converted to satisfy um, the um, Kiwi um, government. So, um, yeah, it's uh, very different. But look at that, hardly high revving. The rev counter goes up to 4,000 RPM. The speedometer optimistically goes up to 120 kilometers an hour, but they were designed to have a maximum speed of 50 miles an hour. Um, got radios galore, a five-speed gearbox, which is dual range. So you've got um, 10 forward and two reverse gears and various controls down here, which we will get to later. Um, hydraulic something or other going on there. There's a master cylinder on it. So there's a separate prop shaft for the propeller as well. Um, so um, yeah, we, we should get to the bottom of these various levers uh, once we go for a drive. Now, unfortunately, I can't drive this vehicle on Kiwi roads because I don't have the right license. It, a class 2 commercial uh, which is up to 18 tons so I can't drive this hefty barge but um, the, the com co company was quick to say oh well you can't drive on the road but you can drive on water so um, we shall um, ha have a mooch around and go and um, take a drive on water we've got Sean and Shelley from Rotorua Duck Tours we are on Duck 2 um, who are gonna sort of take us out and uh, yeah this is going to be quite the experience, I think. Well, that's uh, one of the most involved climbs I've ever had. Look, I'm all the way up here um, to um, get to the engine bay. But here is the Mitsubishi six-cylinder engine that has been fitted as part of an upgrade. Uh, you can see the enormous oil filter was changed back in December. Um, so it's got a Mitsubishi engine. It's actually now got um, a uh, six-speed Mitsubishi gearbox as well, but then it drives the same transfer box. Um, so um, 
beyond the gearbox, all the running gear is still original duck. But um, yeah, this adds a dose of modernity, about 170 brake horsepower and many, many torques. And uh, yeah, that is a huge lump of engine. It must be quite interesting to work on as well. And now we're going to lift up some of the panels so we can see some of the running gear under the floor. So we're now up on top and uh, here are some of the many prop shafts um, in this vehicle. So this one's the main propeller shaft, uh, so well named as a prop shaft. And then we've got the rear drive shaft as well, which includes the handbrake, which has been upgraded to this almighty disc. There's quite a lot of weight to be stopping here. And uh, see the other rear prop shaft down below. Blimey, there's a lot of engineering in one of these. Down at the back, we've got the rudder control and some spanners. Always good to have a few spanners handy. Uh, this has actually been upgraded, so it's now hydraulically operated. Uh, the original ducks uh, had the, um, you turn the steering wheel and it turned the wheels and the rudder at the back. But um, there was just one cable involved, so not an awful lot of um, uh, fallback. So this is a bit more reliable. Right, Shelley is going to take us um, out on the road, first of all. So um, let's hear what the uh, magnificent engine sounds like. Properly agricultural. So, big mirrors are definitely a good thing to add because visibility is not that good up here. You've got a huge, very high bonnet and uh, yeah, tiny little windows. So, big mirrors definitely help out. mechanical gear lever so this is Sean who is um, our main guy today do you normally run with both rear wheels, rear axles going? Yeah, on the road we operate in four-wheel drive. Yeah. Uh, when we come out the boat ramps, obviously we need to go into six-wheel drive to pull us up the, the boat ramp. But yeah. on the road you get a much better turning circle and uh, it's just much nicer to drive with just the rear wheels being powered. I imagine, yeah. We've got the lake off to our left, some steaming thermals. It must take a certain amount of training to um, drive one of these vehicles, which is a truck and a boat at the same time. So how long does that all take? Before we can have drivers actually operating a tour by themselves, it can often take around about six months right. uh, full training to do this. So to drive it on the road, you have to get a class two vehicle license, uh, which I think operates up to about, is it 10 ton? Uh, uh, yeah, somewhere around there. Yeah. Um, with a passenger endorsement, because obviously we drive a tour with, with passengers on the road. Indeed. Uh, so that's all part of that. Um, we also have to get what's called an SRL, which is a Skipper's Restricted Limits Ticket. Okay. Uh, and what that does is it allows people to drive a boat with people on the water. Uh, as well as that, the vehicle itself has to be certified by Vehicle Testing New Zealand as a truck. It also has to be certified by Maritime New Zealand as a boat. Yeah. And on top of that, all of our drivers have learned a full commentary of the city, uh, all the surrounding areas, the history of the town, geothermal activity, all kinds of things, and learn how to talk and drive at the same time. Yeah, and so it's still, definitely. Exactly. Yeah. Being that this vehicle's over 70 years old now, uh, it has its own little knickknacks, so being able to talk and drive a vehicle that you've never driven the likes of before can be, can be quite difficult for a new Yeah, man. yeah, it's intimidating. Yeah, yeah. Excellent, thank you. Was just setting the missiles there, uh, ready for launch. <laughs> Look at this, we have arrived at the Blue Lake. It's not a view I'm used to getting out of a windscreen, but now we need to engage swim mode. So, how do we go about doing that? 
So uh, in order to head onto a lake, mm -hmm. um, we actually don't have to change anything. Okay. Yep. The only thing that we have to do is uh, something we do for our own maintenance. Uh, we have an air lever here. Um, so we switch our air over and what we do is we pump it into our differentials. Uh, we're creating some pressure in there okay. and it keeps the water from getting into them. So that's the only thing I need to shift. Okay. So we're going to drive straight onto the lake. No change needed. Excellent. Okay. Hold on tight, everyone. That is an odd sensation. But thankfully, we do appear to be floating. <laughs> So once we're on the lake, a couple of changes now have to happen. Um, so first thing I'm going to do is use these two levers. We're going to take ourselves out of four-wheel drive, and we're going to take ourselves out of our range as well. So no high range, low range. Wheels now neutral, no longer spinning. Mm -hmm. So propeller lever forwards, so that engages our drive shaft, and we're going to second gear. Right. There we go. There we go. We are away. You'll see that Shelley is actually using the steering wheel. It turns out just the action of turning those front wheels does give you some turning effect and then you can use the rudder to back that up if need be, if you want to go slaloming through cones or so. But I don't think we're going to be doing that today. They're probably there for a reason. Yeah, that is a strange view to get from a truck. What a beautiful experience. So what's our top speed on the water? Well, the top speed we've ever managed to get into is about five knots. So right. that's probably with a decent tailwind, nobody on board, and uh, I don't know, a few other things working in our favour. You're probably looking at a top speed of about, uh, sort of about three knots. Okay. Uh, we can show you if you like. Oh, to see top speed. yeah. Give it, a, give it a boost, Shelley. I mean, that, that's pretty fast for a lorry. Alright, here we go. Oh god. And that's it. Wow, yeah, there we go. <laughs> Full effort. Yeah. Oh, there we go. And this is a simply beautiful spot. Just absolutely idyllic as we um, swim along in our truck. Yeah, yeah. Right, we are currently driverless, so I better step in. Right, move the seats. On the front. Oh, yeah. There we go. Right, so we're still in gear. Yep. So just accelerate. driving a boat truck thing. Oh, it is turning. Yep. If you want to, to show that we are running the uh, the propeller off the same engine and gearbox, if you want to chuck it in the first, just, just regular clutch, straight up in the first. Yep, drop that down. Yep, give us that's a That's slow speed running. Yeah, see so that's the gear, then if you pop back down in a second, you feel the increase of power. Oh well, yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh. Same engine and gearbox go past the yellow cones, they're a swimming lane. Okay. We don't like to compete with the swimmers. Got some road lock there. Yep. Get the rudder again. Uh, just pull it all the way around to the right. So in front of you here is our very high tech indicator for the rudder. Okay. It's full lock one way, and it's full lock the other way. Oh yeah, no return. But does it return? No. No, okay. It'll stay there unless you move it back. Oh yeah, there we go. The white line in the middle, so straight line. There we go, so that, I love how low tech that is. Truck drifting yo on water. 
Same with any other boat, the back will turn before the front does. Yeah. This is definitely one of the more unusual experiences of my life. And what's quite impressive to know is they built over 20,000 of these and most of them had some sort of wartime experience. We don't sadly know the wartime experience of this example. But um, yeah, it's not a bad retirement, is it? end up being a tourist vehicle and bringing so much joy to so many people in this beautiful part of the world. Probably the safest vehicle for me to talk to you while driving. Do you want to have a go at driving it into the water? Oh, I wouldn't say no to that. <laughs> I'll drive it down if you like. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think that's probably yeah, that's better. Well, uh, Now we are coming out. So, drive systems engage. So is that now all six wheels? All six wheels, uh, low ratio. Propeller off, first gear. We're drifting in. There we go, we are driving out of the water. Success. Right then, I'm gonna have a go at um, driving into water. This is slightly nerve wracking, uh, but we shall change the air. So we've got our diffs all pressurized. We shall start the engine. Just on the key. Yep. Yep. There we go. Uh, handbrake is off, I'm on the foot brake. So, Away we go. This is the strangest thing I've ever done. I am driving a truck into water. Oh, that is peculiar. Right, so. All the way forward. Through the middle, you'll feel where the gear comes out. There you go. Oh, yeah. Yep. yep. And that one just straight to the center. There you go. Our right. propeller. Propeller was straight forward. forward. Yep. And yep. into second gear. Uh, engage. And now I'm driving a boat. Yeah, that, that doesn't stop feeling odd. That is um, notably peculiar. And this is one of just. Sorry, this is just one of two lakes that they operate on. So you get a two lake experience on these tours. You don't all get to drive on the freight though. Yeah, it's amazing how well the front wheels steer. It's, it's not quite as responsive as when on the road. There we go, we are executing a left hand turn. We've got four kilometers an hour at the moment. Whoa! <laughs> yeah, that, that is full left lock. We're, we're, we're not executing a particularly tight turn, but on this we are turning. What an amazing experience. rudder indicator as I operate it, this cable moves to show me where my rudder is. So now we're turning much more tightly. We are drifting yo. Now we can see our own wake. I'm not sure you can really do um, skiing behind this. I don't think we're quite going fast enough for that. Full 
about the area yeah. I'm not sure I could do that as well to be honest. Let's have a peek at what's going on under the floor right now. And there is the propeller shaft doing what it needs to. So we can see the drive coming into this centre transfer box but because the levers are in neutral we are not driving any of the other props at the moment. Ah, there we go. So now we got all the props going. And the front one. God, that's a lot of props. Props to you. And pleasingly, not very much water. I'm taking that as a good sign. Yeah. Beautiful. We're back on just the prop. So, how long have you been a tour operator? I have been doing this uh, in probably three years. Oh, wow. And uh, what is it like driving this remarkable oh, car? It's amazing. Yeah, it's just, it's such a unique job. Um, beautiful True. scenery. Uh, we get to talk to people from all around the world. Probably one of my favourite things is, is showing off, uh, you know, a beautiful part of the world and telling people about it. I have and met, yeah. Course, if we were going to New Zealand, people are just so keen to show off this beautiful yeah, country. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's everywhere you go. Yeah. Um, so I love getting to show people my uh, beautiful little corner of the world. Mm. Um, and of course, it's seeing people's faces when you take that first dive off the lake. It's yeah. just something else. Yeah, I can imagine. Yeah, it is. So what was it like the first time you drove one of these? <laughs> I was so nervous, I, uh, my memory has decided that it's not there anymore. Oh. <laughs> yeah, oh, it's definitely very nerve-wracking. Yeah, because out on the road, keeping an eye yeah. on other people and everything yeah. must be quite daunting. Yeah, well this is the biggest vehicle I've, I've ever driven um, before, before I started this job. So mm. definitely getting used to the size of a bigger vehicle. Obviously you've got a very unique front to it as well. Yes. It takes a bit of time to get used to it as well because things tend to disappear underneath you. But yeah. <laughs> um, no, it's it's not too bad at all. You know, I think part of the uh, the excitement of getting to drive something so unique is uh, it keeps you going. Yeah. You know? yeah. You're just like oh, I get to do something not many people get to do. Mm. Um, so you're more excited than anything. Yeah. Lovely. Thank you. Yeah. 
Well, well, yeah, thanks for letting me have a drive. Oh, you're welcome. Will, will you be <laughs> taking us ashore again? Yes, I will take us back to shore. Yeah, excellent. <laughs> we should get back onto dry land. Before it gets here, wins us. <laughs> Oh, the water is so clear here. I can see the bottom coming up to us. There we go, the front wheels have caught. And we are back out once more. So there's one of the cooling vents for the engine. A lot of heat in there. checks to do. Uh, Sean's going around now, mostly checking that there's no weed um, caught up in anything, uh, especially this big old propeller and all the rudder mechanism at the back because yeah you don't you don't want to go spreading weed around from one lake to another. Uh, they are very careful about uh, habitation here in New Zealand but now you really get a sense of the sheer scale of the thing. They are enormous. Oh, yeah, seven tons. It's a big old beast of a thing but what a beautiful spot and what a beautiful experience all good? good well that was definitely an experience like no other that's just the most remarkable vehicle to drive first time i've driven a truck on water and uh, well i couldn't drive it on the road it was still fun to go along for the ride and yeah that's amazing so yeah, big thanks to Rotorua Duck Tours for um, letting me have this experience. Uh, do go and check them out. Uh, RotoruaDuckTours.co.nz, I think, is the website. And if you find yourself in Rotorua, you should definitely do it. It'll be extra good. And you'll find out much more about the area than you did with me, because I'm a rubbish tour guide. But yeah, I shall say, thank you very much for watching. Don't forget the Hubnut store, where you can find Hubnut merchandise and support options. And I shall see you in a future video. Farewell. And now I'm actually going on a full tour with uh, members of the painting public and uh, we're going to go and see what all these tours is like. There goes Shelley. Nice. I was like, my foot now I got green hair and I get to draw the boat. Alright, are we ready? Alright, I'm gonna jump across and give it some dandel. Here we go. We are down. Lovely way to spend a day. Well, there she goes, rather. That is still an impressive sight. Marvelous. <laughs>